the International Center for Radial Astronomy Research. Um, Andreas probably doesn't need much of an introduction. Uh, he's been in HPC, what, 25, 30 years. He's a research professor at the University of Western Australia. He's leading their program in data intensive uh, radial astronomy. Um, gets to play with some really cool toys. Gets to uh, investigate some really interesting data intensive workflows. He's going to talk about some of those workflows and monitoring some of those workflows in his presentation. Andres? Yep, thanks, Mark. Um, so, thanks a lot for the invitation. And uh, uh, well, let's go in the other direction because we have heard now a lot of uh, people uh, talking about uh, sysadmins and, and maintainers of the big systems uh, monitoring and policing kind of people <laughs> saying, well, you should do it like this or like that or like this. So what we are trying to do is uh, slightly different. Um, so uh, who here doesn't know about the SK at all? All right, that's good. Nobody. So that I don't have to explain what it is. Um, but uh, probably you don't know too much about what the load of that thing would be on, uh, on the systems we are looking into. Now, I'm not saying HPC because we are not trying to do an HPC system, at, at least not a standard one. So uh, what's going to be required is uh, for 6 to 12 hours observation is about uh, 50 to 100 million tasks. Uh, during about the same time, because we have to keep up with the observations, ob obviously. That means about 5,000 tasks per second over the whole cluster. Um, and we expect roughly 2,500 compute nodes by the time we have to buy them. Maybe it's a few more, maybe it's a few less, we don't know yet, because this is still a few years out. So this is about two tasks per second per node. That doesn't sound bad, right? Uh, so, um, but the problem is, this is very inhomogeneous. So we have workflows which uh, are highly parallel in some places and not parallel at all in other places. I will show a few examples afterwards. But uh, uh, so we have bursty uh, tasks. So they will, uh, we have lots of them running in parallel on all the nodes and all the cores in parallel. And then at some point, we have to gather all that stuff and, and wait until the, that's done. Um, and uh, we would like to in, uh, gather information about all these tasks running and use that information afterwards to improve the scheduling. That goes pretty much back into one of the questions just, just asked. Um, and all of that should be automatic. So it's not like somebody's looking at all these graphs and say, well, maybe you we should do it like this and that. And we will do that as well, but only in the beginning. Uh, once it's all up and running, hopefully not that, that much anymore. The other thing is we will have to run multiple of these processing uh, runs in parallel because the SK is not a single uh, facility. It's actually, uh, we can split it into multiple ones, so we have to run multiple ones in parallel. And actually some of them uh, in, in parallel on concurrent data and some of them in parallel on, uh, on the same data even. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite complex, the whole thing, um, and uh, we would like to be able to do that in an um, informed manner. Now, a bit of background here. Uh, I've given a talk last time here at the HPC AC, um, and uh, that was about the Deluji system. Uh, so that system is our execution framework prototype, which we have now uh, uh, evolved a little bit into more um, production system. Uh, so this, the thing you see on top there is just an example of our uh, workflow um, editor and how it looks like. That's a very simple graph. Could be much more complex that, than that. And uh, this, the boxes you see there is uh, scatters and gathers. Uh, so you have those things uh, indicated there. Uh, so some of those might be 100 times, 1,000 times scatters and uh, 1,000 times gathers again. So you don't see all the details here, but only the, the indication of it. Um, so what we call that thing uh, data activated flow graph engine because uh, the execution is actually completely data activated. It's not data driven, it's data activated. Um, and uh, the, the, uh, what we want to do is uh, manage the tasks as, as local as possible. Um, and only do monitoring. So the, the thing is, 
completely independent. Uh, once we tick it off, all the tasks are running independently and just trigger the next ta task in the, in the, in the chain. Uh, so we have uh, this, uh, verified the scalability up to tens of millions of tasks on very big systems. Uh, so that's working nicely. We'll show us uh, something about that. So maybe some of our Chinese colleagues know that uh, um, little symbol here. So that's flow. That's uh, the symbol for flow. Uh, that's how it looks like when, when it's executing. In this case, actually two different graphs executing. Which one is it? That one? OK. So, so we have a, a, a production graph and another one which is connected to it on different nodes. Um, and uh, as you can see, one is red, so that didn't work very well. Uh, and of course, one is much slower than the others. All the green ones are done. The, red, uh, the yellow ones are still working. So we have a um, kind of an inhomogeneous run here. Now, the other thing is uh, that Luigi is completely uh, uh, resist, resilient to failures, so this is just ignored essentially, uh, all the rest is running, we, we are fine with that, there's no problem with that, and uh, these runtime issues we are, we are monitoring but not really taking care of, too much at least. This is the scalability graph, I think I've shown that last time, but uh, um, so this is uh, when we ran uh, about 12 million, up to 12 million uh, tasks on TNE2. Uh, in China, and the overhead, uh, depending on how many islands we are, we are uh, deploying, so we have a hierarchy of, of uh, monitoring points here and, and deployment points as well, we can bring that down to a few microseconds. So that's pretty good, looks nice. Now, how do we monitor and schedule those things? Uh, so what we have in mind is something like this, so we have a, a workflow characterization framework, that's how we call this whole thing. And um, we do have a, a resource estimator as well. And we do profiling monitoring to actually feed into those two things, both on the OS, OS side, hardware side, and the task side as well. So uh, we try to collect as much as information as possible from every single task running, plus hardware information at the same time, and then try to correlate that and feed it back into the scheduler at the end of the day. Now the scheduler in our case is not Slurm, it's not a task-based scheduler because we have to uh, schedule workflows. So it's a lot more complex. Uh, scheduling workflows is, is, a, is a really hot topic right now in computer science, and it's quite interesting actually. It's a very interesting topic altogether. So we are working on that very uh, intensely right now. So let's see, and I can go further, yeah. Uh, so how does this work? It's a very busy graph, but uh, don't be afraid about too, that too much. So we have uh, <clears throat> those measurements, traces maybe. Uh, the tools we are using is, is actually pretty much in flow. We are using all kinds of tools in the meantime already. I will show a, a, a model or a, um, a mock-up essentially uh, just afterwards. But uh, so these are all the measurements during um, the, uh, the run of those uh, tasks. And then we have uh, um, things from, from the OS and from IO system and from, from MPI maybe as well. And then we have this data management thing, which is bring it all together, do performance analysis, probably with machine learning. Uh, we are doing something like that as well. And then we go back into the, uh, the scheduling. So this is, this is essentially just a mock-up, and we've uh, done that during a, a pretty nice event in, in China and Shanghai, um, and then uh, expanded a little bit on that. So we have uh, the uh, Dialogy managers here, which is uh, essentially just monitoring the, the tasks. It's uh, not intervening with the task, it's just monitoring it if you want to. And there's something in there which is called an, uh, an event listener. The Dialogy system is based on zero MQ events, and uh, so we can listen to them uh, very uh, flexibly. And the events are uh, raised for every single um, uh, start of, of a, a job, end of a job, and so on. So there are all, all kinds of events, five different event types. And uh, so you get uh, lots of those, of course, if you have uh, a few tens of millions of, uh, of tasks going. So what's happening here is uh, for the time being, we are doing it every second, so we, you get about 125,000 uh, 
uh, events per second um, of node metrics <coughs> because there are 50 of the OS uh, metrics is, is currently uh, captured. And for the Luigi events, uh, we have about 20,000 per second. On average, as I said, it was it's very bursty, this thing. So roughly it's about 150,000 inserts per second. So that's quite a bit for a standard database. That's why we are not using a standard database, but we are using Prometheus here uh, on the node level. <clears throat> and uh, so every single node is running a Prometheus database, and that's part of the deployment of the whole system. So as soon as we send something out to, for instance, Magnus, we actually deploy all these things as well not just the Deluji part, but also this, this uh, the database and everything like this. Then we have an external uh, influx da database up there on the right side. Um, and uh, that's then talking through Grafana. We can then display those things. So that's the system. So this is a manual correlation. So that took us a few hours to get, put that together. Uh, you can't see a lot of things, but uh, you can see these uh, nice little spikes here. And that's during every single task running, uh, but only one of them. So in between, there's also something happening, but on, maybe on a different node or for different tasks. So it's just really carving out exactly what happened during that task. Um, and, uh, and then you have the start time, the end time. And there's actually a bit more information in here because these, these are two events. And then you have, uh, in this case, uh, CPU usage and percentage and, and down here is I.O. And we'll use that, um, <coughs> it's actually memory as well, uh, we'll use that information to schedule the, the next run of, uh, of the same tasks. And of course we have a lot of information because the same task is maybe running thousands of times. So we, we can do a very good average of those things. So this is the kind of automatic version of it. Uh, very early, uh, just, uh, we've just finished, it, finished this a uh, week ago or so. Uh, so this is really taking this Prometheus uh, databases and the InfluxDB as well. And then uh, we have in this case, uh, I think the, the, the other one is uh, the uh, um, memory and the other one is CPU usage. So you have this kind of strange uh, shape there. That's just, a, a, well, it's a mock-up. It's, uh, it's actually running a real graph, but uh, it's a, an interesting one. Uh, simulation one. Uh, and then you see the, the individual tasks they are coming up and these are, these are, these are not single ones, these are many on different nodes. Uh, and, uh, and you have these spikes coming up again. So this is, this is the first version where we have it in an automatic way. So this is then uh, exported into a JSON file and uh, then the JSON file is uh, interpreted and put back into the, into the workflow graph itself again. And the scheduler is reading that uh, at the end of the day. So it says, OK, I need so and so much memory for this task. I need so and so many calls. I need so and so, so much uh, resources. And that's, that's used by the scheduler afterwards to, uh, to do the, the next run, to optimize the next run. Also the distribution, because we are um, um, supposed to run on a heterogeneous system as well. And then that's merged together with the hardware information. So what can the hardware deliver? Like if you need to have a GPU, of course you have to have a GPU in the node. If you need to have uh, uh, 100 uh, gigs of memory, you need to have 100 gigs of memory on, on that node. If you only need 20, then you may have a smaller node. So this kind of stuff is um, actually taken into account as well. Heuristics are very, very uh, tricky. Um, and uh, we have multiple heuristics in the, in the schedule already in that part. Um, and uh, it's mainly because of uh, uh, complex interdependent workflows here, which are running many, many hours. Um, so what we will use then is uh, an average measured uh, parameter set, which uh, goes back into the JSON, as I said before. Um, and uh, as an example, here's memory usage and uh, runtime. Okay, so what we are do doing is actually we work with vendors as well, and uh, so to, to get these uh, benchmarks here for our application, not the uh, arbitrary applications, but for our applications to, to see how they are running on certain platforms. So if we see something is running better on a certain platform, we may just use that platform. 
If uh, we see some other thing is better on a different platform, we may just use that one. But also for procurement, of course, at the end of the day. Uh, the components here are actually software components. So we could uh, have uh, developers submitting uh, new components, drop that in, uh, do a comparison of, of, uh, of uh, these measurements and say, ah, well, that's actually better than this one, uh, maybe even for the quality of the data. Um, so those profiles are used, and then we have a management, of course, so, so these this, uh, things are already in place. So that's roughly how the, the thing looks like. Now, uh, we are actually working together with Niriad um, as, a, as an example of, of a certain platform. Uh, in Niriad, we have two people here uh, in, in the audience. So this is, right now it's mostly about storage, but we are going in, in uh, a bit more advanced things as well. So this is actually, uh, this graph had been running on, on the, sorry, had been running on the, uh, on that cluster. And uh, so we, we are collecting that stuff on top of that. And then we can see exactly how this uh, hardware in this case, or the software stack is behaving uh, for us. Um, now, what we are really trying to do is actually run some of our workflows together with the, uh, the storage infrastructure, which is coming from the software from Niriad, and that means we are running it on the same GPU, and that, that uh, is actually quite, quite an interesting part, um, and that would be, allow us to do a fully optimized I.O. path uh, for, for this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, of course, monitoring this will allow us to uh, see exactly what the impact is or what the, uh, what the advantage would be to do some, something like that. So I said that's not the only thing. Um, so we are actually looking into uh, doing as much as possible with other uh, people as well. And that's not, not just uh, industry, but also organizations. So I uh, was quite um, interested in, in all the talks today. Um, and. Um, these, these things are, uh, I mean, there are lots of things going on. So we are looking into PCM, for instance, uh, which gives us a, a very detailed view onto the, uh, in this case, only Intel processor usage. Um, but uh, uh, all these things are quite complex. So, and, and a lot of people have more um, experience with, uh, with that uh, than we have, but we know exactly how we want to use it. So uh, we are very, very interested in working together with all kinds of people. And that means also, uh, companies and, and organizations. We do a lot of con con uh, containerization as well uh, and try to do hardware-centric uh, I.O. Opt optimization because most of the stuff in, in SK is actually I.O. bound and uh, we have to see exactly um, where we can do things better. <clears throat> and it's especially because we, ha we know already that a lot of the algorithms we have right now do not scale to this kind of uh, thing we, are, we want to do. So we have to uh, make sure that we are spending our time wisely at exactly the points where we, we see the bottlenecks first and uh, do, it, do it like that. So there's a bit of profiling as well at the same time. And that's it for me. Thank you.